Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the Faith Family Church of God Youth Class. I'm here tonight. I'm Marsha. I'm glad you made it um, back. I hope you enjoyed the class. Um, I'm going to start off first with a, a prayer. Um, the last night, you notice that the background is all these presents and gifts dropping from the sky. That is going to be the topic of our lesson tonight. So let's start with a prayer first. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for taking care of us like you have. Lord, we thank you for all the fruits of the Spirit. We thank you for the gifts of the Spirit. Lord, we ask that you ask, I ask that you um, bless each one of us with our gifts. Let us be able to find that gift. Lord, I ask that you bless our church, family, and our families. Lord, be with us as we go through the rest of this week. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. Okay, so we're going to start, first of all, I'm going to show you what Robert just gave me, my hubby. I have a Christmas bag, and I have a Christmas box. I have not opened them, so we're going to open them together at the end of the class to see what he has put in each one of them. I hope they're pretty interesting gifts. So, like I said, tonight we're going to have our lesson on gifts of the Spirit, but before we do, I want to touch on the fruits of the uh, spirit. Um, Sister Brenda and Brother Andrew just finished a um, series recently on Sunday night on fruits of the Spirit. And it got me to think about how fruit trees grow. Because, you know, they don't just pop out on a tree. They start with the seed in the ground and they grow and they grow. And it takes time. And then before you know it, you know, they start having these blooms. And the first one you see a lemon tree. The next one you see a um, plum tree, then an apple tree, and then you have a peach tree. There's a lot of different fruits out there. Now, we're talking about, like I said, food, food of the body, not of the spirit in this case. We're talking about for the body. But they're sort of the same if you think about it. If you leave fruit on the trees like this, eventually either um, a bird or insect will come, come along and eat on them, and it's going to... Um, ruin them, or eventually the wind may come blow and blow them off the tree, or um, an animal, maybe a squirrel or a bird comes along and starts pecking at it and thinks, and, you know, before you know it, the fruit is not pretty like it is right now. It looks real tasty, but when something happens to it, it falls to the ground, it'll rot because it's been disconnected from its life support. Uh, the tree is what keeps the fruit blooming. You know, all the nutrients come from the tree, the trees in the ground. So when when the um, fruit is taken away from its, I guess, you know, the, the lifeline in this case, it has a tendency it will eventually die. Um, and it, it can overwrite too. If you leave it up on the tree, if you leave that lemon or the apples up there, eventually they have reached the point to where they're starting to rot. They're not, they have not been used. They're not being used for what they were there for. Um, they're to be eaten. And if you don't come along and, and, and pick those fruit, that fruit, it's going to eventually, something's going to eventually happen to it. Um, it's going to either rot, fall off the tree, or something. It's, not go, it's got to be shared. It's got to be used, or it's, it's of no use. So that brings me up to the subject, too. The fruits of the Spirit is love. Remember, it's love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithful, and self-control of the Spirit. But like I said, if you don't use them, you know, these these fruits, if you think about these descriptions, that I just said love, joy, peace, long-suffering, on and on, those are from your heart. Those are heart emotions when you think about it. You have love. You have joy, long-suffering kindness, goodness, faithful, and self-control. All that is heart-related, okay? Those are emotions from your heart. You love. You share your love. You love. You share your joy. If you don't, I mean, it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing, just like this fruit I was just telling you about. Um, one other thing about the fruit, um, the enemy has a, they can steal it. You know, like that fruit, those fruit trees. That, you know, someone could come along, or, and that's not their fruit tree. It's yours. It's your tree. 
And they'd come along and they said, hmm, that looks good. I'm going to pick that fruit. Well, you didn't offer it to them. Well, that's what the enemy does. He wants to come along and he wants to take your joy. And he knows what can take your joy away. A joy away, excuse me, joy away. And your peace away. So tonight, um, I'm going to talk about the gift of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is also connected. Um, several months, I'm going to back up a little bit more. Several months ago, uh, I think it was right as the pandemic started, I taught a class about the brain and your heart, okay? They are connected. Let me remind you a little bit. They are connected. And they are so connected and so important to each other that, you know, and I may cause a stir about this one, but when, when a lady becomes pregnant, a mother becomes pregnant with her baby, with their baby, the husband and the wife's baby, that baby, the first things that form in the womb is the spinal cord, the nervous system, which is the brain, connected to the brain. I, I read up on this before I was going to say this. The nervous system and the heart are the two vital organs that form first. Well, when you hear the heartbeat, you know, people start saying, well, it's, it's not a baby until, you know, you hear the heartbeat, whatever. Well, the heartbeat and the brain are formed first. And that is because God wanted it that way. They are connected from the time conception um, begins, before birth, conception begins, the brain and the heart are already connected in that baby. So when they say there is no pain, there is pain. That baby does feel pain because it has the nervous system already, the spinal cord. So all of that is connected to that child. So what I'm trying to say is the brain and the heart, the fruits of the spirit, and the fruits of the gift, gift, gift of the spirit, I'm sorry, gifts of the spirit are connected because the fruits of the spirit are from your heart and the gifts of the spirit is from your brain. And I'm going to explain here the, how they're all connected. Um, the purpose of the spirit of the gift spiritual gifts is for building and encouraging of the church. Um, you are supposed to use your gifts to impact others. If you have a gift, just I'll talk about these presents that Robert um, gave me. If you have a gift that, that someone gave you and you pull it out and you say, oh, this is nice, but it's not any fun if I don't share it with somebody. You know, we have a lot of that that goes on at Christmas. You get a Christmas present that you like, but, I mean, whether it's a board game, it may be a video game, you still going to have to tell somebody you want to play with on the video game. So it, um, the gifts that you receive are, are more fun or more enjoyable when you can share them. Okay. Um, and people seem to make it hard on themselves when they try to find what their, their gift of the Spirit. Uh, so we, first of all, we need to know what the gifts are and how to notice them. So the first one is going to be found in Corinthians 12, 8. It is wisdom. It is, hold on. There we go. First one is wisdom. And that means the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. And I'll say it's 1 Corinthians 12 and 8. It is considered the first and most important gift because it takes everything. You got have you have experience, you have knowledge, and you have the good judgment. You have all three of those things. Um it's, it's wisdom. You know, I have seen people that has one or the other, but not all three. Wisdom is a combination of these, okay? Um, in the Corinthians 12, 8 says, For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. And the most, the person that we know more, most about in the Bible about wisdom is King Solomon. You know, he actually um, talked to God. He asked God for wisdom. And he gave him more than enough wisdom and general. I mean, he, he got a lot, King Solomon did. Um, a person with this gift is able to talk the truth 
and use it to glorify God by choosing godly solutions to problems. Have you ever, now all of these gifts, I was talking about this this morning, when you have these gifts, this list of gifts I'm going through, it's, it's really good to have. And, you know, you're supposed to share them. But the problem that we have nowadays is a lot of people, especially the younger generation, does not want people to share their wisdom. They, you know, they may ask for advice or whatever, but they don't really um, comprehend how important it is to talk to somebody who is wise, somebody that has experience, somebody that has the knowledge, somebody that can give you good judgment. You know, you know no, I wouldn't do that because um, I've lived it. You know, you say, I lived it. I have wisdom because I have the experience. I've worked that job. Or my family went through that. Or I have knowledge because I've read all these books. Or I, you know, but like I said, this generation has a problem about asking for good advice from a person that has a lot of wisdom. The next one is knowledge. Knowledge is fact, information, and skills developed by a person through experience or education. Well, that's book learning, in other words. Um, people that have knowledge, I mean, they, they're researchers. That's 1 Corinthians 12, 8, and it says, To another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. And keep in mind, with each of these um, these uh, verses that I read, like 1 Corinthians 12, 8, every one of them practically says, by the same spirit. There is nobody else, no other spirit, that can do this except the Spirit of the Lord. So every gift comes from the Spirit, and the Spirit knows who to give it to. I'm fixing to get to that part too. Um, knowledge is simply knowing. Knowledge is gained by reading, research, and memorizing facts. So that's why it's important when you're, while you're in school to learn as much as you can. A lot of people, you know, a lot of kids, and I say, well, I don't need to know anything about that. I don't, you know, this is just silly. Well, the more you know, the more you learn, the more knowledge you have and knowledge to share. And it goes back to what I said a few minutes ago. It's good to have these for yourself, but you need to be able to share it and need to find somebody that wants you to share it. That's another problem we have nowadays is, like I said, the fact that, you know, everybody knows everything already, and they don't want to hear advice. They don't want to hear what you know. They say, well, you Mr. Know-it-all or Mrs. Know-it-all. But it's important to listen to um, people with knowledge, the experience, because it sure can save you from going through a lot of heartache, you know, to talk to somebody that's went through the same problem or knows more, you know, experience. Okay, the next one is faith. Faith is unquestioning belief that does not require proof or evidence. Now, you know, when, when, <laughs> when we have faith, we use that word um, a lot, you know, but if you really examine down deep inside, it is hard to believe something if you don't have the evidence. It's hard to believe something if you don't have proof. You know, if somebody says, um, I, I don't think, um, I think it's going to rain tomorrow. Well, you say, you know, or I know it's going to rain tomorrow. Well, how do you know it's going to rain? Because the weatherman said so. Well, how does the weatherman say so? You know, how does he know? Well, this chart, this chart. So, well, show me the chart. It's hard to believe anything, especially nowadays, you know, faith in people. That's what it says. You're supposed to have faith in God. Trust no man because all they are doing or assuming, you know, or thinking what they think, um, their opinion. Faith is when you you know, you believe something with all your heart without any evidence of it, okay? Um, we know there is a God. There's evidence. We've seen miracles. There is evidence of God. But there are some people that don't believe that. So, but anyway, faith is unquestioning belief that does not require the proof or the evidence. 1 Corinthians 12, 9 says unquestionably that does not require proof or evidence and the verse says to another faith by the same another to another person to another people more people to another faith by the same spirit that one also says same spirit the next one the next gift is healing to restore health or soundness 
Okay, that's First Corinthians 12, 9. It says, to another gift of healing by the same spirit. The same spirit, not a different one. Um, you know, healing is, 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 you know, you can watch these televangelists and you can sometimes say, you know, he is a healer. You know, he can get up on that stage and he lays hands on people and they're healed immediately. Well, that goes back to what I just said about faith. You know, is, is it evident? Do you know for sure that these people are being truthful that they were sick? Now, I have seen, I, I have witnessed people with cancer. I have witnessed people extremely, I mean, on their deathbed, who didn't think they were going to make it, be healed. Whether it's the health or their mind, their soundness, their mind, restore them in their health and in their mind. Well, that is a gift of healing. People can lay on hands. People can just pray for you. The gift of healing. That's First Corinthians twelve nine. The next one, miraculous powers occurring through divine or supernatural intervention or manifesting such power. Now these definitions for these gifts I've, I got off of the um, out dictionary. I got, um, googled it. Googled the meaning. And so some of them sort of you know question about how what they're meaning, but this one. I'm pretty sure, occurring through divine or supernatural intervention or manifesting such power. So this is, this definition says there is a supernatural, in our case, a mighty God, a mighty God, who um, intervene. You know, we can go into prayer, miraculous powers, pray, intervention, intervene. You know, you go and have yourself, say, I'm going to put myself in this person's place to be prayed for, for them to be healed or a problem or something, occurring through divine or supernatural intervention. You can be prayed for, for for other people. You can pray for other people. Intervention. First Corinthians 12, 10. Um, it's, I want to say one more thing about that. And I had a note about it to remind myself. It is amazing at the number of miracles in my own life and family in the past several months. Praying works miracles. Prayer, you you can ask my granddaughter, there are some things that, that she has just really been, she's into this prayer thing. She's not, you know, some things she's not you know, too sure about. But one thing she does believe in, and that's prayer because she has seen too many miracles not to believe them. Amazing miracles. Okay, next one is prophecy. You know, we, we have a lot of televangelists and a lot of people that says that they can um, prophesy. And this means predict. And I'm going to go back to what I was saying earlier about the weather. Now, you know, when we talk about the faith, let me read the verse first. 1 Corinthians 12, um, 12 10 says, um, um, I, well, I said, uh, um, I think I put it down. I didn't put it down. Anyway, it's, it's a, from the Spirit, the power of prediction, okay, prophesying. To another prophesied. I see it now. First Corinthians 12, 10 says, To another prophesied by the Spirit. Um, a real prophet can be known by discernment. And we're going to get to discernment here in the next one. But back to what I was saying about the prediction of the weather. You know, everybody likes to get up and say, Okay, what's the weather going to be today? You know, they may ask their spouse or children, may ask their mom or dad, whatever, Is this supposed to rain today? But they automatically think you're supposed to be able to predict what the weather is. Well, the first thing you do is you turn on the TV and radio or pull out your phone and you start looking for the weather forecast. Well, that's a prediction. They are, they are prophesying. Now, that does not mean that they, they don't actually know what the weather is going to be. They're predicting a forecast because of what the elements are, what the, you know, what the radar looks like. But in the Bible, you have a lot of prophets in the Bible that would go to these kings and, and I mean, just like with David, different ones, you know, different prophets in the Bible. You'd have to go to the Bible to get them. That would prophesy and tell them what God was going to do to them. That is prophecy and prophesying. And um, I've seen a few televangelists try to do that, and I'm not too keen on some of them. I don't, don't, a lot of them I know have not come true, but uh, especially in the last year or two. Anyway, that's prophesying. The next one is discernment, the, the ability to judge well. First Corinthians 12:10. also, it says, 
to another discerning of spirit. Okay, have you ever been around others, listen to them talk, and and they they make out like they are doing you know so well, or they'll be somewhere and they'll, they'll say you know my family is this. I mean they're making everything sound so good, and you say something's just not right, something just not feeling right or sounding right about this story, you know what they're saying. Well, the spirit can give you the you know when you have gifts, the Holy Spirit is inside you, okay. And the Holy Spirit is the one that gives you these gifts, you know. And you may have gifts that you don't even know yet. You know, people say, well, I don't know what my purpose is. Well, you may not know right now that well, you, you uh, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself right there. But anyway, you may not know right now what your gift is. So we're going to get there in a minute, too. Um, the next one is speaking in tongues which is speaking in a way or in a language that is not normally understood by the speaker or the listener. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 10, and that one says, to another, the verse for that one is, to another different kinds of tongues. Each one of these has a verse that tells what the Spirit is giving, you know, to each person, what he gives. Um, we receive the Holy Spirit, but some do not have the gift of speaking in tongues, okay? Um, our church believes, you know, you receive the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Well, some people don't speak in tongues, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to give me my, my thoughts on this. It's not what anyone has said, but this is what I feel in myself. First of all, the Spirit, um, these gifts are given by the Spirit, and I believe, myself, that he knows the ones who would be able to openly and boldly speak in tongues. He knows who could be, you know, the ones that can have use discernment for as a for other people. He that he knows our personalities. And if you've got the Holy Spirit in you and you don't speak in tongues but you're too scared to, um, you wouldn't do it. So I, I really believe, and I'm, I'm not saying this is what the Bible, I'm just saying my, my thoughts, my opinion. Um, so don't take me, <laughs> my word for it, but this is what I think. That when he gives out these gifts, he knows in their heart who will actually use the gift like they're supposed to. Because, you know, if some people get speaking in tongues, they get to speaking in tongues, but they're too shy um, to do it, and they're supposed to speak, be speaking, and they don't do it. They're quenching the spirit. So I believe, you know, you know, we have the Holy Spirit in us, but these gifts are are distributed in the way that the Holy Spirit knows that they will use it. Okay. The next one, interpretation of tongues. Same thing, supernatural verbalization and subsequent interpretation to reveal the meaning of the verse tongue. In other words, there's someone else that is there, you know, you've been in services where, where someone speaks in tongues and someone else interprets it. it um, if I read correctly in the Bible, you know, people that um, speak in tongues, they don't know what they're saying. Sometimes they maybe do. They, they end up um, speaking in tongues and interpreting it themselves. But from what I read, when they're, you know, right off the bat, they don't, they don't even know what they're saying. They just know they're speaking in tongues from the Lord, from God. Then someone else interprets it. And that was 1 Corinthians 12, 10. says to another, the interpretation of tongues. This gift operates out of the mind. Remember a while ago, I was talking about from the brain. You know, we have the fruits of the spirit from the heart and the gift of the spirit from the mind. Um, all of the work of all are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. So if he determines that, okay, Marsha, I'm going to give you the um, gift of discernment because, you know, I, I believe that, I know that you you can speak to people and you can talk to people and find out what they're really thinking. I mean, or what they're really uh, saying is you can feel the difference. And I can't, I can tell when I'm talking to somebody, you know, that's just not, that's just not right. Do I believe that or not? And then the Holy Spirit says, "Yeah, you know, that's that's not. You know, don't don't listen to it." Okay. 
next is, like I said earlier, you're supposed to use your gifts of the Spirit to serve, serve others. So, um, I want to go to 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11. And this is where it says you're supposed to share your gifts. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. It, you know, it, it means, you know, like I said, it means that you've got these gifts. The, the Spirit dis, distributes them, okay? And you're supposed to share them. Like I said, if you have a gift and you don't share it, um, it's, not, it's not enjoyable. Remember, the fruit of the Spirit, one of them is joy. So how are you supposed to enjoy your gift of the Spirit if you keep it bottled up in your mind or in your heart, whichever one you know we're talking about here? Um, he gives strength to use your gift. You know, if you've got a gift of, um, let's just say teaching, or preach, let's, let's say teaching in this case. If you have the um, gift of teaching, and that is one of the leadership, the knowledge, you know, we're talking about the knowledge and the wisdom, all that is part of teaching. You have to have knowledge about what you're teaching. You have to have wisdom on how to, how to present it, you know, to share it. But if you do not, don't do that, you know, I, I truly believe you will lose your gift. Just like the enemy comes to take away your fruit, you know, to, to steal it, he can take away your gift because you won't use it. It's like you hid your gift because you're stingy. So, well, I've got the gift of um, teaching, but, you know, I'm not in the mood. I just don't think I want to teach. I don't want to have to study for a lesson. I don't want to do this. Well, you start complaining, you've lost your joy because you're supposed to be happy in what you're doing. If you start complaining about your gift, whether it be teaching, whether it be the computers, whether it is your singing, if you start complaining about what the, your gift is that the Holy Spirit gave you, it's not joy anymore. He will, you can lose your gift. He'll give to somebody else that he knows will use it for the sharing with other people, okay? Um, also, we can have more than one gift. 1 Corinthians 12, 11 says, But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. It doesn't say that he just gives you one gift. You may find that you have more than one. You may be able to teach. You may be able to sing. I mean, you may be able to um, counsel people. You may be a counselor. You may know so much that you can actually sit down with a couple that that seven problems and counsel them. You know, the, the, the Holy Spirit knows your heart. He knows your capability, knows your will. But if you don't use it, you can lose it. What are you good at? Okay. Romans 12, 6 through 8, it says, Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. In other words, you know, we've got the two of them together, your faith and your prophesying. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberty, liberality. He who leads with diligence. Don't stop. Keep teaching. Keep leading. He who shows mercy, show it cheerfully. Show it with cheerfulness. When you show mercy, be happy about it. Yeah. Another way to find your gift, your ability and your joy. Do you have do you have something that you enjoy? Do you feel it in your heart? Like with myself, I enjoy teaching. You know, sometimes 
it gets to be a burden because I'm not sure what I'm going to teach on. But it's amazing what the Lord puts in my mind at the last minute. God wants you to have a, he wants you to give with a cheerful heart, whether monetary or your or your services. He wants you to be happy when you do it. You know, these are gifts. When you get a gift from anybody, whether it's from Robert or whomever, that person that gives you that gift wants you to like it. He wants you to use it. If we get a pair of, get some socks, or if we get a tie or a suit or we get new shoes from somebody, you know, if it's not, if it's, those shoes don't fit our feet, we're not going to like it. And we're going to say, we, we need to give this to somebody else. So anyway, so anyway, 1 Corinthians 14 and 1. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the spirit, spirit, especially prophecy. Okay. Follow the way of love. Now, we're talking about the gifts of the spirit. We're not talking about the fruits of the spirit, but like I said, they're connected. So, to follow the way of love. Love comes from your heart. And you eagerly desire gifts of the spirit, especially prophecy. If you're able to prophesy, um, eagerly use your prophesying, eagerly predict, eagerly be happy about it. Don't be reserved about it. Your desire or longing for the gift comes from God, not from the flesh. And definitely it does not come from the enemy. The enemy, the devil, is not going to make you, give you, um, he's not going to put in your heart and your mind something that he knows you use for the Lord, okay? So the gift does not come from him. He may, The enemy may try to make you think you use the gift, but he does not, it's not from flesh. Your gift, these special gifts of the spirit are not flesh. So like I said, we're talking about knowledge. You can't take knowledge away. We're talking about wisdom. You take wisdom away. It's there in your brain. It's there. To, you know, it can't be taken unless there's a serious disease or something that, that you know, um, is a problem. Okay, Proverbs eighteen sixteen. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Um, we should be faithful to use the gifts that God has given us, and that as we use them, our faith will be strengthened. We should be faithful to use those gifts that God's given us. In other words, when it's time to teach, you're ready to teach. If it's time to sing, you're ready to sing. You practice. You um, show up. You research. You do everything that you're supposed to do to strengthen that gift. Okay, 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 7. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Now, you remember that. There are all sorts of gifts with, you know, knowledge. But a lot of things go into knowledge. Wisdom. A lot of things go, you know, well, wisdom. You may be doing something that you do not realize is actually a gift, a gift of the Spirit. Because they're not labeled like that. If you sit down and start thinking about the things that you do for the Lord, you know, the gifts, what you do, it will go back, you know, whether it's reading the book to somebody you know, a, a, a disabled person or elderly or someone that needs attention. That is a gift. Not everybody is able to sit with people. It takes a, a special person, a love. It takes a special knowledge how to take care of them. So if you sit down and make a list of actually what you do, you'll be able to probably um, figure out what your gift is or what your purpose is. Anyway, there are diversities of gifts with the same spirit. There are differences of ministry, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. That's 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4 through 7. Um, like I said, everybody, God's people, have. You know, the Spirit has given us all gifts. 
okay? Uh, it's hard to find it. It's hard to find it sometimes, you know, and sometimes you don't want that gift. You know, I mean, you and you want it, let me rephrase that, you want it, but you're so shy and you're, you're sort of the inner, the, the enemy starts playing with your mind, makes you think, well, you can't do that. You can't get up and teach. You can't get up and sing. You can't get up and preach. You know, before you know it, the enemy is trying to make you think you cannot share what the Spirit has given to you to share. And you're supposed to share it. Let me finish reading that again. Um, the opportunity to use your gift. Your gift will be equal to the ability to use it. Your awareness and ability to use it is a process. It will mature. And oh, but um, The more ability you have, the more opportunity. Some gifts are not recognized as a gift. Like I said, you know, you've got a gift, but if you don't, uh, you can't see knowledge. You can't see faith. You can't see um, wisdom. You can't see tongues of the Spirit. You, you have to sit down and make a list of, or in your mind or whatever and think about the things that you do. You know, because some things that you do is actually part of the gift. Like I said, reading for somebody. You have to have the knowledge of being able to read um, and explain comprehension. Be able to explain what you read. Okay, in conclusion to this, um, I want to open these bags and see what Robert gave me. Okay, first of all, let me see. My first, my first present was is this little New Testament, okay? He thought well enough of me to think of my eternal life. This little book does not end. It is unlimited, okay? Um, eternal. No matter how, how old, no matter how many times you open it, no matter how many times you use it, whatever, it does not end. It goes on and on and on. It never dies. It is something that you can share with people all the time. It is something that um, nobody can change. They may try, but it does not change. Okay? So that's my Bible. Thank you, Robert. That eternal Bible. Then, he gave me this little box. It says, let it snow. Christmas presents. <gasps> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I should have got this for the Bible, but I didn't. But I should have. Look at this. Cards. Different cards. We've got American Express, got uh, Sam's, you know, debit cards, whatever. All these little cards. Money. Money, money, money. Okay? The problem with this is there are limits. And you have to pay them back. Okay? There are limits. You can you can charge and charge and charge and get everything that you want, and you can even share what you've got. Okay, for Christmas, if you got a football, it's no fun playing with a football alone. You want to share that present. Same way with um baseball and bat and catch, catcher's mat and mitt. You know, all these things that you can buy need to be shared. But well, that's like with the Bible to be shared. Your gifts of the Spirit to be shared. Um, they go on and on and on also. But these don't. You, you, these are enjoyable for a little while, and there's a limit to what you can do with them and how much you can get and how much, you know, once the money's gone, that's it. You can put some more on there until you pay the bill. So there are restrictions on this. There's no restrictions on this, on the Bible. And you can share it. You can share it from these, too. But once these are gone, that's it. So in closing, I want to say one more thing. I, I want to um, plug our church for a minute. Faith Family Church God, located in Pearl, Mississippi. 
Uh, we have morning services on sun, uh, Sunday morning at uh, 1045. Um, if you do not have a church, if you attend regularly, um, are you looking for a lo um, an active church, a loving church, and ones that care and that will welcome you? Um, this is my sincere invitation for you to come and visit with us. I'd love to meet you. So anyway, I want to say have a good evening and love you all. Bye.